of Fame. Here's Booker T and Brad Gilmore. Welcome inside the Hall of Fame. I'm Booker T, six-time world champ, two-time Hall of Famer. Got my man Brad Gilmore here with me as always, man. And we're getting ready to do this thing, bringing it to you live. ESPN 975-925. And I tell you, man, uh, I got a I got a I got a whirlwind week. I'm getting ready. I'm, re- I'm getting ready to get started. Uh, I want to thank before we even get started, I want to thank everybody in the Motor City, man. The Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. Had a great time at the uh, uh Detroit, Michigan uh Comic Con uh, over the weekend. And uh, now I'm um, getting ready for NXT tomorrow. I took an extra day off. I should have been um, already on a plane <laughs> right now, but I took a little extra day to try to rejuvenate the batteries so I can get ready for the action. I'm going down tomorrow night, as well as uh, I had to go pick up my old vintage Mercedes Benz, my first car that I ever bought when I um, got in the wrestling business and started making some money, man. Got the interior, all the interior redone, man. It's looking good. I want to thank everybody over there. Precision. Uh, a trim over there, Spencer Highway and 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 the Beltway. They did me right, man. They did me right. They got they got a little Sadie looking real, real good. And uh, Sadie, I, <laughs> I can't wait to get uh, get her back out on the road. Man, I'm having some difficulties here. My my screen go dead, guys. There's something wrong with my computer. I don't know what's going. On. Oh no! Did we lose him? I think we lost Booker for a second. Um, can we just like for a moment have a uh, a good laugh at the fact that Booker has a Mercedes that he has named Sadie, and I and I've seen it before. It's actually still a beautiful, beautiful machine. Uh, I think he's like a '97 or a '98. They're still rocking, man. We're gonna talk about a lot of things on the show. Hopefully, uh, we can get Book back here um, momentarily. I'm trying to see. No, he's not back yet. But we have to talk about all the things going on in the world of pro wrestling, of course. Hold on. Hold on. There he is. He he has joined us back. He's joined us back. We're, we're about to get into He's everything. Giving, there giving, he is. I don't know what's going on, man. I've had some type of technical difficulties. My computer just sometimes just want to go dead. You know what I mean? So I'm going to have to send it in and get checked out. Man. We got to figure that one out. Yeah, we got to figure that one out. Um, But we were you were talking about Sadie. Uh, of course, the Mercedes Benz. You're going to be all around the world and back again. And when it, is Halloween Havoc this weekend? Is it this Saturday? Um, on Saturday, yeah, yeah. I got to get ready to um, hit there as well. I got some. Got to go to New York. I got to go to Boston. Man, I'm, uh, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm serious. I'm already tired. I just want to cry uh, sometimes, man. Uh, but uh, work uh, yet still has to be done. Uh, and, and like I say, man, you know, you know my motto. Always available when I'm available. When I, when I don't, when I don't have, when I don't have time, I'll make time. So uh, it, it, it'll get done. I'll make sure I get it done. And and it, and the thing is, once you get started, it's normally over pretty quick. You know what I'm saying? It's just getting started. It's the problem. Getting started is the problem. You know, I feel you. But, but what does it mean though for Halloween Havoc to be uh to, to for you to be on the call for Halloween Havoc? This is a out of the WCW shows. There's a couple that stand out as like pay-per-views, but to me, Halloween Havoc and Bash at the Beach are the two that I always remember. One for the theming of the shows. You had surfboards and sand at Bash at the Beach. You had goblins and ghouls and jack-o'-lanterns at Halloween Havoc. Also, some of the great matches of all time came at both. What um, what does it mean for you to be back now as a broadcaster for Halloween Havoc? I don't know, man. I'm serious. I really don't know. I'm 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 um waiting. And highly anticipating, um, just sitting at the desk and being able to call the action. Um, I, I know people are going to be saying, you know, what are you most, you know, anticipating um, seeing? I, I don't, I don't know yet. Um, like I said, I'm growing with NXT just like everybody else is. I'm growing with the talent um, just like everybody else. I don't want to tend to think that I know everybody or act like I know everybody, right? Uh, and what their skill sets and what their strong suits are or anything like that. I'm going to um, weigh it out tomorrow. I'm going to be, um, you know, definitely up sitting there and calling the action. And um, I'll look at and see exactly what's going to be going down on Saturday and, you know, weigh in on that, that as well. Uh, of course, we, we already talked about talked about Booker T's Bay 5 is coming back as well as Booker T's Shucky Ducky Quack Quack moments of the week. So I'm just looking forward to getting my, my hands on this clay, man, and start molding um, superstars. Yeah. Yeah, but it just... 
I the fact though that it is Halloween havoc. I guess my question was like, when you hear those words, like what goes yeah, through your yeah. mind? What's the first oh, thing you think about? WCW. I think WCW, of course. Right. Um, it takes me back um, to WCW, but I don't want to um, sit here and try to think, uh, reminisce uh, about old, old, old things. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm thinking about the future and what's what's next, which is NXT. And I don't, I don't, I don't expect these guys to go out there. And and bring that old WCW feel. I don't. I don't even want to look here. I don't want to see the old WCW feel. I don't want to have that feeling ever again. Okay, <laughs> I'm serious. Hey, it's WCW. Just, that WCW feel was good, especially on the first and the fifteenth. You know man, what I'm saying? Look here. No, no. Every week. What's what you talking about? Oh, y'all got paid weekly. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, weekly, bro. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, you know. So so. so Fridays, you know what I'm saying? But no, no, it was good, but but no, I want to see something new, I want to see something fresh, and um, I want to see how these guys could now in 2022 make me feel about um, the, 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 the game that I love so much, which is, which is professional wrestling. I'm excited for it, I'm excited to see NXT go down. Of course, we got to give a big shout out to our girl Roxanne Perez, who made her SmackDown debut against Bailey, or was it you know, that was part of the match there on SmackDown. For her to uh, be involved, make her SmackDown debut. I saw her mom was there. Her yeah. mom was in the building for it. It's amazing, um, man. special moment. It's amazing. Uh, she's definitely, uh, she's definitely a prodigy. Someone that has walked that road um, pretty much the way I, I, I uh, prescribed it. I always say, you know, let's let's not try to go all around the world to get to where we're trying to go. Let's just try to take one direct route and and I, and I tell you Roxanne has definitely done that and she's doing a hell of a job in NXT I, I just don't I don't I don't want to see a rush or anything like that I, I just don't want to see a rush too quickly because I know people look at her and say man she is that, that extraordinary talent and you want to put that kind of talent out front um, but my thing is you want to make sure that talent is seasoned and ready to, to get the job done and that's that's just my thing and, and I I could be uh, overprotective you know as a parent you know per se whatnot but uh, I, I think no matter what situation they put her in she's going to knock it out of the park yeah um, we have a super chat here in the early goings a lot to get to today but uh, Terry Thompson wants to know uh, hey book looking good uh, who do you see being called up from NXT to Raw or SmackDown? Much love from the VA. Yeah, everybody, shout out where you are in the chat, by the way. We want to know where you're representing. But, yeah, do you see anybody already? You know, um, do I see anybody already uh, ready to be called up from, from NXT? I, I haven't, haven't been there long enough. I haven't been there long enough to actually see who should be a guy that, you know, perhaps shouldn't be there. Um, I, I think from what I've seen, um, everybody that I've seen so far, um, those guys need to be in NXT. They need to be getting polished. They need to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting uh, more seasoned. Um, um, they, they need to be, uh, more importantly, trying to figure out what that playbook is going to be. Um, and and, and this, this game is not like a, 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 a sprint. It, it, it truly is a marathon as far as trying to learn the craft. I mean, and you got to understand also, uh, it's different for, you know, the wrestlers today. They're in that NXT um, group. They're in that system and they're learning. And then, they, you know, you put them on the road. These guys, they don't have like a lot of worldly experience as far as going around the world, traveling, knowing what it means to work in front of a, a crowd in Detroit, knowing what it means to work in, in Philadelphia, knowing what it means to, you know, work in New York. You know what I mean? So it, it's a lot of different, you know, um, variables that you got to know it if you want to succeed so my thing is let, let me get my uh you know um get my uh, spider senses on as far as uh who's ready to get up out of there but it's going to take a minute for me to see that it's going to take a minute book um we'll, we'll, we'll watch nxt and you know what i know your fave five is there i know we got like carmelo uh and, and things of that nature i'm going to to start tracking your fave five too every week and we can reevaluate it here on the show and see you know, where these people are going to go. You know, if we see Carmelo going up, we see this person, this person, this person. So I'm excited that you're back on NXT. I'm excited to see you tomorrow. By the way, you can see Booker T on, on worldwide television on the USA Network every Tuesday. Check that out. Hey, stick around, guys. We're going to be talking about a little boxing that went down over the weekend, uh, mm. as well as everything going down in sports and entertainment. Stick around. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute.
Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame, guys. Told you guys we're going to be talking about a little bit of boxing that went down over the weekend. And one fight in particular, Devin Haney versus George Cambosas 2 went down for the WBC belt, the WBA, the IBF, the WBO, all lightweight championships on the, tie, on the line. And I tell you, Devin Haney is one of those kids who... He's a prodigy, man. He's a prodigy. He's one of these Olympians. He's one of those kids, you know, kind of like Sugar Ray Leonard that, that comes out. And you just know he's going to be um, next level. And Devin Haney went out against George Cambosas in, uh, in Australia, uh, went, went, went to this man's hometown, to his backyard uh, to defend uh, those championships and, and, and to win um, by unanimous decision. It, it, it was it, it wasn't even uh, it wasn't even close as, as far as I'm concerned. Devin Haney went over and handled his business down under, and I tell you, to go into somebody else's backyard, uh, just that right there alone, I'm having I'm having that problem again. Well, we still see you though. We okay, can still I, see I, you I'm having that problem again. I don't know what's going on, but uh, you guys can still see me. Uh, we we talking about boxing. Uh, oh, and there he goes. Uh, yeah, we're talking about Devin Haney. Of course, we're going to get into some news about Deontay Wilder while we wait for the champ himself, Booker T, to rejoin us here inside the Hall of Fame. This is what happens, guys. We're doing live radio. You know, this isn't just a podcast. This is on live radio, ESPN 975, 92.5 here in the H-Town area. We appreciate it. Booker's going to join us back in a minute, but I want to shout out something that uh, Wisperience, I believe, says uh, here in the chat. He's from Ontario, Canada. What up, Wisperience? I just want to... Make note of this. He said, hey, folks, don't forget to like the stream. I only found out about this channel about a month ago, and it almost never comes in my feed. That's because we need y'all support. If you're watching right now, hit that thumbs up button, hit the like, share, subscribe, do all the things you're supposed to do. Give us five stars on iTunes. And we got the champ. No, no, no. We lost the champ. It's all good. But you got to do all those things so that we can continue to find people can continue to find us here on the Reality Wrestling YouTube channel. I know we have almost 700,000 subscribers, but we need more. We need more eyeballs here on the product, as they say. While we await for the champ himself to return, um, one thing that we're definitely going to get into in the realm of boxing is the return of Deontay Wilder, the bronze bomber. Can't wait to hear what Booker thinks about that. And I believe we have him back here. Book. Yeah, man. I don't know what's it's all going good. On. I don't know what it is, bro. I can't tell you what's going on, but uh, hopefully we'll get it fixed up here over the next week or so. But uh, hopefully um, it won't happen again. Let's get it going. You were talking about Devin Haney. So, uh, I mean, what, you, you, you obviously with Dominic in the fight, you were saying. So just kind of what were your thoughts? Any more additional thoughts you wanted to add? Uh, I mean, just Haney. watch the kid, uh, you know, handle his business. I, I wonder, you know, how, how Devin Haney is going to fare when he start, you know, fighting – better competition not saying george cambosis is not a you know stiff competition or anything like that because um if you beat teofimo lopez you, you got you got something you know going for you um but um to lose the title on um, the way he did and then to lose the rematch also and devin haney said it if i could beat you once i can beat you twice i'm wondering how devin is gonna fare you know when he step up and start you know perhaps having to fight the the Tank Davis is, you know, of the world, you know, the Terrence, Terrence Crawford's, you know, of the world when he steps up, you know, and wait, whatnot. I'm just wondering how this kid is going to fare. So I'm just wondering, but right now, as far as, uh, you know, what kind of talent uh, are, are we looking at? Man, um, next level, extraordinary talent. And I'm just glad to see boxing still alive. Talk about the bronze bomber. Deontay Wilder came back um, and, in, well, it was a short night of work for him. I guess we could just say that. This was a fight that I think that you and I discussed as more of a get your mind correct fight to uh, quote the color changing click from back in the day, right? It's just kind of getting your mind back on focus, getting getting back on track. Tune up fight if you saw the movie The Longest Yard. Um, what did you feel call, about I would, that? I wouldn't would call it a tune up fight. Um, um, Robert Hellenius, um, he's a he's a dangerous dude. He's a he, he's a tough customer. He's uh, but one thing I can say. Is Helenius looked like he came in after he just came from the donut shop. <laughs> he, he looked like he was out of shape. It didn't look like he was in uh, uh, boxing shape um, like I had seen him in the past. They called this kid the, uh, the the Nordic nightmare, uh, but 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 the nightmare definitely. Uh, <laughs> he was having it uh, in that fight. And the thing is, on the shot that took uh, Robert Helenius out. It, it didn't even look like it was really that hard of a shot. 
It seemed right. like it, it didn't. It seemed like it had no leverage on. It, it didn't even seem like um, uh, the punch was at the end of uh, Deontay Wilder's power. It didn't even seem like that at all. It just seemed like he was just throwing a shot in retaliation, and, and it landed, and, and it landed to the point to where Elanius went to sleep. I mean, brother night was night. sleep with his eyes open. All he needed Out. was a, a one of those uh, my pillows from you know. <laughs> no, you don't need any of that. <laughs> Not only, and I'm not, this isn't a political statement. Not only is that man nuts, those pillows are awful. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my, this was like five or six years ago. I was like, Mo, my pillow. I've seen this stuff. You know what I mean? I tried that. That's the worst pillow ever. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> the worst. They Don't do my. Don't do, Michael the, like that. Don't do Michael Don't do Michael I'm doing them like that. They did the United States public a favor when they took those out of the stores. <laughs> Thank God he had. <laughs> what about the keys? What about the keys of sheets? The keys of sheets. <laughs> you know what I mean? The he's, keys not, of sheets. he's not fooling anybody. Those aren't keys of sheets. Those are Des Moines, Iowa sheets. He didn't get that, that cotton from Egypt. Jeez. That man's nuts. And yo, I'm not oh. trying to even make a political statement. You know, you can't have an ad. You can't have an ad when you go, I used to be a crackhead. Now don't buy to, my pillow. Don't try to cancel, don't try to cancel Mike Lindell, man. Look, don't, he's doing a great job of that himself. I'm talking about the product. Just, I'm a consumer. I had the product. Hilarious. He, he, he needed some kind of a pillow. I got a, a herniated <laughs> disc not, from my pillow. <laughs> my pillow, but he needed some kind of a pillow. You know he I mean? got much better sleep than I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm wondering. I'm wondering, did that do anything for Deontay Wilder's stock? I think that put him back in the game. You know, that definitely put him back in the game. Sure. But, you know, I'm just watching Deontay Wilder at 214 pounds. It just did not uh, fare well uh, for me as far as Deontay Wilder getting back in the um, heavyweight pitcher and becoming champion ever again. At 214 pounds, he's not going to be able to do it. Uh, that that's just not going to happen. You could you could tell by his balance. Um, even though he went out there and won that fight in the first round, you could still see so many flaws uh, from Deontay Wilder that it wasn't funny with inside those three minutes. So, so my thing is I, I, I didn't see a whole lot of improvement from Deontay Wilder. I didn't see anything different uh, from Deontay Wilder. Um, he landed the big shot. He got Elanius out of there, but, but I don't know if Elanius came to, 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 to win or whether he just cashing in, uh, throwing it, you know, that, that I, um, I, I, I can't, I can't call it. I can't call that either. But, but what I, what I will say is Deontay Wilder at 214 pounds. I mean, that's not abnormal for Deontay. I think his in, in the first fight with uh, Fury, he was like what two? I think he was like two fourteen, two fifteen, two twenty. Tell me, just tell me this: Do you think if he was to fight Fury again, and Fury comes in at two sixty, and he's at two fourteen, you think he's going to be able to do anything other I, than uh, other than I, what well, happened in the last fight? Well, in the last fight, he came in heavier. And I think that that was, well, what did I actually know what? Hold on, hold on. What, what did he weigh in in the third fight? I'm thinking the second fight he came in heavier, right? No, I, think, I think the third fight he came in around 218, 220, something like that. What, not, yeah. not, much, not much more, not much less. Well, I, I, I man, I got, now I got to look it up. I can't remember if it was the second or the I just third don't fight. See, I just don't see his body. He can't um, put on too much more weight, though, is my I, thing. I mean, why not? Um, the guy's six foot five inches tall. Why can't he? I weighed 230 pounds. Okay, see, I'm looking this up. Right well, and I'm 57 years old. Why can can't De Deontay Wilder okay. put on 10 to 15 pounds? Why? Well, why, I'll why tell you, he 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 came in at 231 in his fight against Tyson Fury in the second fight, the fight that you and I were at. And 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 what do we see there? We saw lethargy. We saw his legs were gone. We saw he had his cardio was not there. Just putting on that other 15, 20 pounds. But no, didn't he say that? You know the the the, the, <laughs> the outfit. Costume? What's the reason because of that? I mean, I I'm not, I didn't say that. He said that, yes. You, you trying to make excuses for it. I'm not making excuses I, for him. No, I'm no, saying the extra no, no. weight didn't help him. You said the extra weight didn't help him. You saying, you know, it, it, he was tired, his legs wasn't there. That's not the reason he said his legs were tired. No, it's not the and reason. So should I go on what you're saying 
You should not go with Deontay Wilder. You should said. not go with what Deontay Wilder said because he also I said, said that, go, he also I said should, he also said Fury had some in his gloves. I or that go, was alleged. I should go with what you say there, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know why? Because I'm, Deontay, I'm an observer. I should, I should believe I should believe Deontay Wilder. Look, look wait, know? hold on, just for one second. In the first fight, when he weighed two twelve to two eighteen, whatever he weighed, when he weighed that they, that fight went twelve rounds, right? And he 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 knocked. Well, I mean, he knocked Fury down on, on on that 12th round. We thought it was a death blow. Now, Fury got up. He takered it. Kudos to him. But if you compare fight one to fight two, what happens in fight two? He can't get all the way to the end of the round. Why? Well, you know, well, 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 you know what happened in fight two also? What happened? Fury gained about 15 to 20 pounds. Fury was heavier, too. That's that's a fair. That's fair. Exactly. Now, exactly. So you're saying Wilder going down and Fury going up somewhere that's going to work out in the middle. That, now that it also it might work out in, in Wilder's favor and somehow. Now also in their third fight, Wilder weighed 240. He weighed and, 240. And I'm just did saying. He, I mean, did, like, did he do better at 240? I I haven't watched that fight intimately. I think he did he better did. than he did. He did better than he did in the second fight. Absolutely. I think he, I think he did a lot better at 240. I think fighting at a lightweight is not going to work out for him. We got to take a break. Stick around. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute. My name is Dan Miller, and I'm trained to be a professional wrestler here at Reality of Wrestling. Professional wrestling has been part of my life for as long as I can remember. Growing up, I would have the toys, I would have matches with stuffed animals, I had a little paper championship. I always had that voice in the back of my head saying, can you do this? Can you really be a pro wrestler? And one day that voice got so loud, I just had to know. So I did my research and I found that Reality of Wrestling is the best training ground in the whole country. You could sit down and turn on the TV every night of the week to watch pro wrestling, and you'll see someone who got their start in this ring. Reality of Wrestling teaches you everything you need to know about the business, from putting together the ring to putting together a TV show. This is a place where you can come and work on your fundamentals, work on your body, work on your interview skills. This is a one-stop shop for everything pro wrestling. If you have that voice in the back of your head, now is the time to find out if you have what it takes here at Reality of Wrestling. Can you dig it, dig it sucker? Dig it, sucker. Oh, and uh, there he is. We're back here inside the Hall of Fame on ESPN 975-925. Booker T, I think you're there. Can you hear us? I got you, brother. There you go. There you go, book. We were talking about that Deontay Wilder fight, obviously, that went down over the weekend. Um, so, okay, you're saying, if I can just make sure that I'm, I'm getting it right, you're saying he can't do any damage at the weight that he's at. Not that he can't do damage. He's not going to be able to compete with the big heavy hitters at that light weight of 215-ish, right? Well, Plus or minus 5, 10 pounds. Uh, let me, let me uh, uh, rephrase that. Deontay Wilder, he can he can hang with just about anybody in the heavyweight division except the elite. And the elite right now is Tyson Fury. Okay. Uh uh, can I do I think he could go out and compete with Anthony Joshua? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Do I think he can go out and um compete with, you know, like I say, the majority of the heavyweight uh, division? Uh, yeah, I, I I think so. But do I think he's gonna be able to capture the heavyweight championship from Tyson Fury if they were to fight again at the weight he's he's at right now like i say, the only reason i say that is because in in the in, in the less than three three minutes deontay wilder didn't show me anything different his balance was off you know um his punches you know he's 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 flailing uh, a lot of times with his punches he, he lands the big shot uh when when need be uh, take that um can't take that away from him but like i say, deontay wilder just didn't show me anything different than you know what I've seen before out of Deontay Wilder. I just do not see him capturing the championship from Tyson Fury in no way, shape, form, or fashion. No way. I don't disagree with that. I mean, I I, I think that even their draw in fight one was an obvious win for Fury, if it, according to my scorecards. I think that sometimes somebody just has your number. I mean, look at Holyfield and Tyson. I, I don't know if 
Deontay Wilder can really do anything. Um, I'm just being honest to compete with somebody like a Tyson Fury. Can he compete with pretty much anyone else in that division in, in the heavyweight division, Anthony Joshua included? I think so. I think so. I think, you know, then I'd like to see probably another fight from Wilder before I say that he would beat Anthony Joshua. Um, it is straight up one-on-one, but he, that, that's, that's, that's a better matchup for him than Tyson Fury. I think Tyson Fury is an awful matchup for him. And I just think that's always going to be the case. I, I don't think that, I think that's his white whale. You know, that's his, uh, his Moby Dick. And just about everybody in the heavyweight division, just a kryptonite. <laughs> Tyson Fury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so he's, I'm, he's not, I'm, not just, I'm not just throwing, um, you know, Deontay Wilder in a box on his own or anything like that. I'm just saying if he wants to become the heavyweight champion again, he's going to have to do something different. He's going to have to find something different because if he go in there fighting the same way he fought over this past weekend, the same result is going to happen. Let's move on. Um, we we got anything? Uh, we got anything in wrestling? We, we we do have a couple things that I do want to talk about. Um, yeah. But before we move completely off of boxing, I I do want to ask this question of you. It's it's somewhat boxing related, but it's more so focused around our favorite film franchise between the two of you of all time, between the two of us. Rocky, the Rocky movies, right? The poster drop for Creed three today. Okay, and Creed three comes out in March twenty twenty three, but there is no Sylvester Stallone in the movie. There's no Rocky, right? It's just about Creed. Michael B. Jordan directs. I ask you, Booker, does that make you want to see the movie more, less, or does it not change your opinion of it at all? It's not going to change my opinion or anything like that. It's not. I didn't watch the movie just because Stallone did him or anything like that. And as we see, man, um, Stallone's getting older, man. He's getting, he's getting old. I mean, he can't be in every Rocky movie. I mean, it's going to come a time where he's going to have to step back and, and step away from it, um, as well as I, I would, you know, I'm going to be intrigued on seeing the uh, finishing product, you know, uh, directed by Michael B. Jordan. Maybe, it's, maybe it might be something special. Might be his, um, his, you know, coming out party. You know, so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing play out. It, it might be better. We'll, we'll see. I just, for me, to, I, I don't need Rocky even to be a major character in the story. But for him to not even be involved, because I know there's the whole thing going on with Sylvester Stallone in the studio. He doesn't own the rights to Rocky. That aside, it's just weird to have a Rocky movie. I know it's not a Rocky movie, but a movie in the Rocky universe where he's not even in the movie. It's just, it, to me, it feels off. Yeah. It just yeah. doesn't, because in the in, Ro, in Creed 2, he doesn't have a huge role. You know, if the movie was, if, if the movie was uh, being called Rocky, I might have a problem with it. Okay. It's not. It's called Creed. So it doesn't make you feel weird that, like, he's not in it at all. Like, the character Rocky isn't in the movie. It doesn't, man. I mean. It makes me feel weird. I don't know I why. Like, I feel like you got to move past that, man. It's like me having my old Z28 from back in the day, man. I mean, you got to move past those old days. You no, know? no, no. You just talked about how you have the first car you ever bought. I said I said I have when I start making money. When you start making money. Yeah, okay, that, there you go. That's different. That's How's different. that different? A lot different. You might not understand it yet. Maybe one day you will. Hopefully. I don't know. I, 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 I'm going to see the movie. I'm not saying I'm not going to see it, but it takes a little bit of my enjoyment out of it. I have such an attachment to the character of Rocky. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, me personally, it's not going to bother me at all. I'm looking forward to seeing how it play out. Hopefully the brother, you know, like, like I said, it may be his coming out, but he may be the next Rocky. You know what I mean? I hope it's we may, great. We may, we may be walk, watching Creed Five one day, okay? With Michael B. Jordan, you know, one day growing old and being Rocky, uh, playing that role. You know what I mean? So I'm serious. You know what I mean? So that's just the way life is, man. It's just the way, do, the way life is. Do like we seven. like Michael B. Jordan? Do we like him? I don't like him. You don't like him? I'm not a big fan of Michael B. Jordan, to be honest. But Why is that? Uh, but it's not like um, I dislike him or anything like that. Am I going to watch the movie? Yes. If the movie is good, will I, will I, will I you know, speak on it? Of course, I see it's good, you know. If, if the movie's good, will I want to see Creed, the next Creed? Yes. Okay, that's the way I am. Did, so, did you like the first two Creeds? It was, they're all right. They're all right. You know what I mean? The but, first uh, one's real good. Nothing, um, nothing that blew me away or anything like that. Nothing that made me go, you know, a, a tear uh, didn't come to my eye or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't right. like watching the, the, the Woman King uh, or anything. But, oh, man, I uh, still haven't seen the Woman King. I'm slipping. Yeah. I got to see it. That You know what? It's interesting. We went to the movies over the weekend. I said, I know there's something I'm supposed to see, and I couldn't figure out what it was. It was a woman king. I got to still see it. I want to see it. I can't wait. 
Um, Mr. Philadelphia says, hey, guys, do you think WWE canceled any immediate plans to split up the street profits? I don't know. Um, street profit, they've been pretty quiet lately. I mean, we haven't seen a whole lot, you know, from the street profit. It still could be, um, you know, some rumblings, you know, behind the behind the curtain as far as, you know, breaking those guys up. I, I don't know or anything like that, but I don't know. I, I, I spoke my opinion as far as a street profit. I said, Right now, say if we broke those guys up, you know, a year ago, you know, it wouldn't have bothered me. But right now, I just didn't do not think it's the time to break up Street Profit. I think we, I think we can get a whole lot more out of out of that tag team um, if we just, you know, line these guys up in the right direction. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, as far as them breaking them up, yeah, right I, now, I don't, right, right, right now, Montez <laughs> is hurt. You know, right now, Montez uh, Ford dealing with an injury um i don't know if you guys saw him he's, he's got a boot on his foot um so so right now um that's that's the reason why we hadn't been seeing a whole lot of you know action from these guys but like i said hopefully they'll get back in action pretty quick yeah we'll see we'll see where they go i think that they need another they need another really good run before they split up if i mean i guess they eventually will every tag team does uh it's not to say that they can't get back together at a later date but sometimes um as a fan, you don't want to see that. I, I just hope they do this. I'll say this. If they break up, it's fine. Um, eventually. I don't want to do the thing where they feud against each other. Hey, well, come on. You got to do that. It's wrestling. I mean, you don't break up and not feud. That's just part of the deal. You know what why I mean? Can't, why can't they just say, you know, you go your way, I go my way? No, nah, no. Nah, it's got to be one guy. That's really I can't be like a mutual up. respect. Got to be one guy coming up, and the other guy got to put. I mean, and that one guy got to be putting the other guy down. Well, see, and that, that's my problem with it. That's well, my that's, problem with it. That's the only way it works. No, you works. can you can do it to where both guys come out of it. Because I'll tell you this: as a fan, as a fan, very few times, if ever. Okay, it looks like Booker just closed his laptop. <laughs> there you there? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. As a fan, what up? So I brought you. I was up. saying, as a fan, when we see the tag teams go after each other, on a rare occasion, does it ever work? Normally, as a fan, it's like, I don't want to see this. I remember watching WrestleMania 25, uh, which had, was headline, or not headline, but had the great Shawn Michaels Undertaker match in it. I remember watching that. I think the opening match was Jeff Hardy versus Matt Hardy. Hated it. Now, uh, uh, a good example of when it works is Owen versus Brett, right? But Owen was a great heel, like a great heel. So what I don't know. Do you do you think Montez or do you think Montez or Angie could be a great heel? Yeah, I think so. I think Angie uh, might can fit that role. You know I mean, Montez. I think fit. he's. I think he's more likable than Montez. Yeah, they, no, I, like I was just finished, Montez can fit it as well. You know what I mean? Uh, but. Whether they're gonna go that route or not, was I don't even know if these guys are gonna break up. Let's not even get, you know, put the carriage before the horse, man. Let's not even get there. Um, if they break up, we'll, we'll know it. Uh, right now, there's nothing in the works for those two guys breaking up. Uh, like I say, I don't think they've done enough to break up yet. I just don't. I don't think they've uh, uh, succeeded, you know, as a tag team, um, quite uh, just yet enough for them to break up. I think they just need a little bit more under their belt in order for those two guys to move on if they are going to break up sometime in the future. It's just my okay. opinion. We have another one here. Uh, I think we have time to take it before we go to break. How you see this Wyatt Six going? Sounds like they're going to wrestle. It could be entertaining once, but I wouldn't carry it on. A Wyatt family, though, is money. Yeah, people are thinking that the the Wyatt characters that we see, like the, the Husky Harris Pig and the little bunny and all this stuff, that they're going to be actual performers in the ring. Man, I don't know. I I, I made my opinion on the Bray Wyatt um, thing just last week as far as, you know, the mythical and the magical, you know, side of Bray Wyatt. And I think, you know, the evolving of Bray Wyatt is something that's going to be needed, you know, in order for fans to really be able to, you know, get behind this thing, just like for an instance, you know, Bray Wyatt came back and, you know, he cut a promo and he cut a promo as his real self, you mm -hmm. know, and then at the end of it, of course, it went off, what not being, 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 being. But I think um, Bray Wyatt being more real is the direction that I think that character, you know, may take 
And um, I think for me, it's the character that I would want to see because I feel like I could do so much more, you know, with that character. Bray Wyatt being, you know, you know, having the family, uh, you know, just like that aspect of Bray Wyatt, it always worked for me um, because he's the guy that could, he could win, he could lose, you know, and then when you put yourself in a position where you can't, you know, lose, you know, and then uh, I'll just say, for instance, when you lose, it feels a certain way. And and then, you know, just say, for instance, you beating everybody on the roster. What do you go from there? I just don't see a, a ceiling, you know, uh, uh, for something like that. So I don't know. Stick around, guys. You're in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we, we, we got a little bit more to go. Uh, stick around. We'll be back in a minute. Can you dig it, sucker? You are listening to the Hall of Fame. Here's Booker T and Brad Gilmore. Hey guys, this is Booker T, six-time world champ and two-time WWE Hall of Famer, inviting you to check out the official podcast feed of the Booker T Roast. Episodes of the Roast will be debuting the month of October, and they are guaranteed to be good. Subscribe and follow the feed now on your favorite podcast app and leave a rating and review. Now, can you dig that? Sucker! Can you dig it? Sucker! You are listening to the Hall of Fame. Here's Booker T and Brad Gilmore. Boom! Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame, man. Uh, we got any more super chats? We got any more super um, chats? I don't believe at the moment. Uh, this is our last segment of the day, so if you have any... Uh, Anything that you want to get in that we can talk about, make sure that you uh, super chat that in. We'll answer any and all questions. Calling out all bums. Calling out all bums. <laughs> what, what, what did you think about the Bray Wyatt thing, man? Uh, if you saw the program. Um, yeah, I did see it. I, I agree with what you just said. I don't want to see the. I don't want to see the magical and mystical. I really don't. I, I think that we're past that. Um, you, you here's the thing. It's hard for me in 2022 to have a fight pit match, right? And then have a wrestling pig. Do you know what I'm saying? And what I mean by that is the fight pit is supposed to bring a sense of realism. You got a former double champ, light heavyweight and heavyweight champion, Daniel Cormier in there, um, refereeing what's a simulated combat between these two individuals, Seth Rollins and Matt Riddle. They hate each other. They, it's a blood feud, right? I can't go from that to seeing a pig and a bunny rabbit wrestle. You know, yeah, you yeah. know, you know, I saw a clip on on social media over the weekend where somebody at any show had a wrestling match with a dog. I saw that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a kinda, disgrace. It's kind of like. um, uh, <laughs> It's like Joey Janela lighting his boot on fire is what it's like. Know, to me. It's like the first time I was doing commentary. I mean, that's the first time I was doing commentary, but. Um, when I when I was on commentary, and the first time I saw um, Adam Rose, he came out, <laughs> and the first thing I said at the table, "This not this is not gonna work." <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Hundred percent right. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You were hundred percent right. So this came out, I go, "This is this is not gonna work." <laughs> <laughs> because like what you just said there you know the realism behind it you know coming out with a party of people you know what i mean everybody's you know seem like they're so damn happy you know what i mean that, that's not that's not gonna work that's, that has no sustainability at all and uh we, we saw the outcome we saw the outcome with adam rose uh, uh and, 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 and I, what i had heard from him before I, I think he was going by leo kruger and I'm sure he was wondering, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, he was for Leo Kruger, and then he went to Adam Rose. Yeah, he, you yeah. know, it, it, well, look at, look at, look. People, uh, I see Kid in, in the chat, you know, our faithful, one of our faithful listeners said gimmicks work, though. Yeah, gimmicks work, though. They do. It's in certain circumstances. Like, for instance, Karrion Cross, uh, When he was, and Kid's just saying, are gimmicks irrelevant now? When Karrion Cross was in NXT and they had the, entrance with him in scarlet he was a badass right i yeah. mean he looked like people a tough loved, customer people loved it 
People loved it. He was he, NXT champion quickly. I think he beat Keith Lee for the title. Convincing, believable. And then you bring him up to the main roster, and he puts on a uh, S and M mask and some leather, and he looks ridiculous. And he's and it's no longer you don't buy into this madman killer. You think of this looks, this looks like what the worst type of pro wrestling looks like. It was eighties. It was, it was 80s. so eighties. It, it was, was so eighties. That's the perfect word for it. It's eighties. So, like, a Bray Wyatt character uh, who has a wrestling pig and wrestling rabbit, and I'm not just talking about Bray, but that was what somebody brought up, to me is so Papa Shango, you know, just old and hokey, and you have you have Papa Shango, you got the goon, you've got Duke the Dumpster Drossy, you've got Mantar, you got Bastion Booger, and then you got Bray Wyatt. Like, it would be in that category. You know, and we're just so far removed from that. And then you, you got, know? and then you got Roman Reigns, and then you got Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley, yeah, yeah and Kevin yeah. Owens. Oh no, I, I get it. Um, I get it totally on one hundred percent. Like I say, I I I I, I love the um, Bray Wyatt. Um, you know, Bray. Wyatt, excuse me, I love Bray Wyatt being back, and and the character of Bray Wyatt is something like I say, it's going to have to evolve into something that we all can look at it and, and say. Yeah, I, I can buy that. I can believe that. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. I get, I get it. You know, and and if if we don't get to that point right there, it's going to be something that uh, it's, it's it, just like the Bray Wyatt before. It was hard to work with. It's it was when Bray Wyatt lost to Goldberg. Everybody was wondering what the hell is going on. Do you agree with me or not on that? Yeah, yeah, I remember, remember vividly. And it was it was something that people was like, wait a minute, how could he how could he lose to to Goldberg? It, it just didn't. It didn't fit for me. So we're going to see exactly where the thing goes. Me personally, I already said um, the evolving of um, Bray Wyatt is something that's done. The evolving of Bray Wyatt is something that is necessary for him to be able to continue to be a viable character on WWE television. It looks like Booker is closing his laptop and reopening it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but we do have a... Uh, Another super chat here while we get Booker back on the feed. Kelly Toenail says, speaking of movies, Black Panther drops next month, but I haven't heard any hype for it. Are you guys rushing to see it? Will it be as good without Chadwick Boseman? Um, will it be as good without Chadwick? Well, I think that that's just a loaded question. It can't be as good without Chadwick. There he is. There's Book. Book's joined us back on. Damn. Damn. There you are. I, you know, I don't know what it is, man, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to fix it. We're going to fix it. But, hey, we have a super chat coming from Kelly Tonell here in our closing minutes. He wants to know if this new Black Panther, Wakanda forever, is going to be as good as uh, the original without Chadwick Boseman. Obviously, it's not going to be the same without Chadwick, but I'm looking forward to it. What do you think? Yeah, man. Um, you know, it's one of those things that, no, it's one of those things you, you're definitely going to be thinking about Chadwick Boseman, you know, uh, just because, uh -huh. man, the brother was just getting started. It seemed like every, everything was just, you know, clicking for him. It seemed like everything was falling in place for him. And and I'm sure he worked his ass off to get to where things like that was starting to roll for him. And then, boom, God, take him. Um, you're definitely going to be thinking uh, about Chadwick Boseman, but, but I think uh, you're going to want more so for the movie to succeed. Um, because of that, I think, you know what I mean? Um, and me personally, I think, um, I think, it's, I think I'm going to watch it. I think it's going to, I think it's going to, I think it's going to, you know, I think they're going to knock it out of the park again. Black Panther was something that was so unique, uh, especially for my people. You know what I mean? Um, seeing yeah. a brother out there doing his thing, you know what I mean? That, that might be the reason why I want to go see Black Adam. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I see a brother out there doing so. We got a black superhero. Let me go support him. You know what I mean? Uh, one, of those, uh, one of those type of deals. So For real though. Yeah, seriously. So, uh, yeah, man. Look, that original Black Panther was so culturally relevant, obviously. But also, let's not forget, it made a billion dollars, a billion with a B, and was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. It wasn't nominated for Best Sound Effects, Best Special Effects, Best Supporting Actress. It was nominated for Best Picture. Like the Academy said, out of the out of all the movies made this year, ten of them are considered for Best Picture. Black Panther was one of them. 
So yeah, I want to see a sequel to that. Yeah, I want to see a follow up to that. Does it suck that Chadwick is gone? Absolutely. Do I think that this movie's going to celebrate his memory and yeah. what he meant? Ab man, I think it's going to crush it. I think it's going to crush it. It's Ryan Coogler. It's everybody it needs to be. Um, that 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 but that first Black Panther can't be overstated. How significant of a movie it was for so many reasons. Nah, bro. 100%. 100%. I agree. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, it, next one. When is it um, coming out next week? It's, uh, yeah, I think in like two weeks, maybe. So, after Black, there's Black Adam, and then I think, I think Black Adam's this week, and then Black Panther's next week. Okay. Um, but do you like, just to reiterate, it's like that movie had to be perfect. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for what it represented. Can you think of it for the first time you have this black superhero? You're leading a movie, a big multi-million dollar movie. You know, it had to be what it was. It had to be perfect. And Chadwick and Michael B. Jordan and Ryan Coogler and, and you know, everybody. Everybody was in the film. It wasn't overdone. Uh, no, it was perfect. It, it, that's, it, it, some, sometimes you, you, you get a, a superhero movie and it's just overdone with, you know, you know, stuff that you go, okay, you know, ah, you know, so much like the Superman movie when it was fighting and just going through the buildings, just crashing into buildings and going, it, it, I'm like, wait a minute, who go pay for all this? You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. So uh, when, I, when I saw uh, Black Panther, it definitely, um, like I say, it, it was like a, a match. You know, sometimes you can just do way too much in a match. You know, we always say, you know, um, less is more. And in that match, excuse me, in that movie, it seemed like um, less was more. And it definitely was a perfect movie. But, but did it not also follow a wrestling match? Because when you think about it, Black, uh, Black Panther, the character, T'Challa, babyface shine at the beginning. We see how, how powerful he is, how great he is, how everybody loves him in the community. Michael B. Jordan comes in, heel heat. Boom, yeah. boom, beats Black Panther down. He's the new Black Panther. And Black then what happens? Come back. And no, finish. No, like I say, no, it was a rest. It was just like a wrestling match. It was just like a wrestling story. I mean, I, I, my I mind went, is blown. I went along. It, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It wasn't too much. It wasn't too many high spots. You know what I mean? It was it wasn't too many false finishes? <laughs> you know what I mean? They did exactly enough to actually go. Wow, that's a pretty good movie. When you're walking out of the theater, you go, "That's a pretty good movie." Yeah, yeah. I see we got. I see we got one more super chat before we get what? out of here. We'll take it and then we'll leave. Kid says, uh, who do you think the next Rose star is to go to WWE? Gino Medina. Gino Medina is the next guy to come out of reality wrestling that's going to shake up the world. It's going to shock the world and let you guys see something very, very special coming out of reality wrestling. We talk about Roxanne Perez, who started when she was 16. Gino Medina started when he was 16 at reality wrestling. Right now, he's a grown man ready to um take the world by storm so um, keep your eye out for this kid because like i say he is special he is extraordinary um but right now guys we got to get ready to get up out of here i got to get ready to head out of here early early in the morning nxt make sure y'all check me out on nxt tomorrow night heading into halloween havoc on saturday night so guys um we got to roll up out of here i want to thank everybody for stepping inside the hall of fame getting your champagne wishes caviar gene trees Bradley, as always, man, we appreciate you for doing all the heavy lifting. But right now, peace. We out of here.